Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. And in today's video, I want to share with you how I go about knowing how full to fill my candle jars when I'm pouring multiple candles at a time and using a vessel that doesn't come with an automatic fill line. So for instance, this nine ounce straight set of jar right here comes kind of with an automatic fill line already included in the jar versus something like my 13.5 ounce Cali jars does not. So it's just completely um, smooth. There is no indication on where you should stop filling it up. So I just wanted to share with you how I know where to stop filling up my wax when I am pouring multiple candles at a time. So first thing I wanted to mention, because I know I always get questions on this, is where do I get my wick holders? And these were custom made for the Cali jars that I personally use from an Etsy shop, and I will have that linked down below. This video is sponsored by me and my website, ericamariemorris.com, where I create digital products to help other aspiring candle business owners. To learn more about my digital products and help support the channel, check out the links in the description box below. Now, when it comes to making and selling candles, when you get that label on your candle jar and you're looking to sell it, legally you have to include the net weight contents of your candle. And that is essentially just the wax and fragrance oil mixed together, the weight of that inside of your jar. So you wanna make sure that when you are pouring your candles that you are giving an accurate fill weight and net contents for your candle. So if you are just pouring one candle at a time, it's very easy to do that because you know that when you are measuring out the wax and fragrance oil in your pouring pitcher, that you get an accurate weight and you have it on the scale. You then take that amount and you pour it inside of your candle jar. But when you have multiple candles that you are trying to pour, it can get confusing on knowing where exactly you should be stopping to get that net contents that you are looking to get per candle. Candle. One way that you can do this is you can actually put each individual candle onto a scale and then pour out the amount that you need to be pouring into each candle jar. But I personally don't do that and I have never done that. I don't think it's a very efficient way to do it. And also when you have to pick up the candle and take it off the scale, it's going to kind of move around a little bit and you may have to clean that up later. And that's just not something that I personally like to do. So what I like to do is actually just have a little indicator that hangs over on the side of the candle jar that is set to be the desired fill level. So basically as soon as you're pouring in that wax in there and you see it hit that little indicator, you know that it's time to stop and you have the correct amount of fill weight that you are looking for for your candle. And the easiest way that I have found to do this, and I have used this from the beginning, but I recently upgraded to another custom device, is using just a piece of folded tin foil. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make the exact amount that you are wanting for your candle. So the exact fill weight in either grams or ounces, whatever you work with, pour it into your candle, and then fold up a piece of tin foil, and then figure out and align that directly to where it just touches the liquid. You always want to make sure that you do this when the wax is liquefied and not when it's solidified because when it's solidified it kind of shrinks a little bit so it's going to be slightly different. Another tip that I did want to mention is that I actually add a couple of grams to the total fill weight. So for instance, for this candle, I like to fill it up to be 10 ounces. You could do nine, you could probably do 11, you could do nine and a half, whatever it is. Because this doesn't come with an actual fill weight to it, you can fill it up to wherever level that you want to that's going to be comfortable for your wicks and everything that you have with your lid and all that kind of stuff. But I like to add a couple grams to it so 10 ounces equates to about 283 grams. I actually add on three grams. So I measure out for 286 grams. And again, that is just so when I am pouring multiple candles, I'm really making sure that I am getting to that correct net weight that I'm looking for. And also, um, if you've ever poured candles before, you know that when you are going through the pouring process, sometimes there is some leftover wax that hangs onto your pouring pitcher. So that's also kind of a way that I get around that as well. So what I did was I went 
went over to my soy wax and I poured out exactly 286 grams into this pouring pitcher. And I am just going to go ahead and pour this directly inside of this jar. And then I will show you how I kind of create the fill weight. So now this is basically what you would do first before you created any kind of guide. And this just allows you to get an accurate weight. So let me adjust this because this is a little too long. And get this a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna take some scissors and I'm gonna cut this. And actually, I prefer it to be a little bit longer than too short. And that's just because you can always add more, but it's harder, if not, I don't wanna say impossible. I've tried to remove wax before when I over poured it, but it, it's, it's kind of a hassle. There we go, I got kind of a better angle so you guys can see. So it's barely touching into the liquid as I put that on there. So this would kind of then become the guide and you wanna shape it onto it so that you're able to take it off and it's going to hold its shape when you pick it up. Now, I will also let you know that if you are using any kind of wick holder or anything like that, you do have to take that into account because this is going to add some height as well. So you want to take that into account. And um, after I was using this for a really long time, I actually ended up getting a custom little device and um, it's the same kind of material and stuff from the 3D printer that these are made out of. And this is something that is just going to sit on the side right there. And it's actually made to sit and fit exactly onto the thickness right here. So this is something that as soon as I put that in there, it's just barely going into the liquid. And again, I actually like to keep these a little bit longer than shorter. And that is again, just because what I typically do is we'll go through and we'll pour and fill them up as soon as they hit this. And then there's usually leftover wax in the batch. And then I go through and I pour an even amount into all of them and kind of top them off. And with this device right here, I, I honestly don't know if he still sells these or anything like that, but this was actually longer. So this was longer down and I had Chris cut it to the length. So what I did was it was longer and I put it inside there and I just kind of let it sit inside of the wax and I pulled it up and then I marked where the liquid was. And then that's how I knew where I wanted him to cut it. But I went a little bit, I told him to go a little bit lower than that because again, I wanted to keep it a little bit longer. But this is pretty much the process of the way I go about making sure that I can fill up my candle jars and make multiple batches at a time and get pretty dang close to that fill weight. And again, adding in those grams is knowing that I am, if anything, over pouring just a slight than under pouring. So that's pretty much how I go about it. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video. I, that kind of looked like I was trying to flip you off. I wasn't, I was just doing that. I was just poking the camera. <laughs>